how to write an awesome chord progression in five steps. Let's do this. Step number one is to establish your key. So you have to decide a key and there's a few factors in deciding which key to play in. You wanna try and play in a key that sounds really cool to you. So to do this, you have to experiment with all 12 keys and see which one sounds the best for you. It's gonna be different for everybody. Also try and write stuff in keys that you're not very used to. So in this case, this chord progression is in the key of E flat because I don't write very many things in E flat. So that's step one, we are playing in the key of E flat. Step number two is to get a basic foundational chord progression. So in the key of E flat, we have the chords, E flat major, we have F minor, we have G minor, we have A flat major, B flat major, C minor, and D diminished. And out of these seven chords, we can create a basic chord progression. So I'm gonna start in, we're playing in the key of E flat, so I'm gonna start with an E flat chord. So an E flat major, our one chord, our tonic chord. Then I'm gonna to move to chord number two. This is gonna be our predominant chord. So that's gonna be chord F minor. And for another predominant chord, I'm gonna play A flat major. So currently we're at one, two, and four and then gonna finish up with a dominant chord, which is chord number five, which is B flat. So altogether, our basic foundational chord progression is E flat, F minor, A flat, B flat. And if you're not sure what I was talking about when I was saying tonic, predominant, and dominant chords, I've done a video explaining that, which you can check out up in that corner over there. So that is step number two basic foundational chord progression. Step number three is to extend these chords. So when I say extend these chords, I mean we're adding sevenths, ninths, elevenths, thirteenths to these chords. As you heard in the chord progression, I wasn't just playing major and minor chords, I was playing some quite fancy chords. Uh, these are just gonna add a little bit more pizzazz to your chord progressions. So for the first chord, the E flat major, I played an E flat six nine chord. <laughs> I really like the E flat 6 9 because it sounds pretty sophisticated and it doesn't sound too jazzy. Then for the chord number two, uh, F minor, I played an F minor 9. Now for chord number two, you could play an F minor 11. You could also just play a standard F minor 7. There's a few different options but I chose an F minor nine. For chord number four, I played an A flat major seven. So it's a little bit more fancy than just a standard A flat major chord, but not too fancy, just the seventh chord. I figured if I made it any more complex than that, it would just sound a bit overkill if I used the 13 chord or something. It just wouldn't really suit the chord progression. So. A flat major seven. And then for the B flat chord, which is chord number five in our key, I played a dominant 11 chord. This is my favorite chord to use as a dominant chord. You could play a dominant seven, a dominant nine, a dominant 11, dominant 13, if you wanted to, but I chose a dominant 11. So altogether, we've got E flat six nine. We've got F minor nine. We've got A flat seven, major seven and we've got B flat 11. So that's step number three, extending your chords. Step number four, so step number four is to add passing chords into your chord progression. So what are passing chords? Passing chords are simply uh, chords that are not the core foundation of your chord progression that go in between the primary chords of your chord progression, so to speak, and they add a little bit of spice, a bit more movement in your chord progression, and they just help things sound a little bit more interesting, I guess. The first one I used was in between our E flat 6-9 and our F minor 9, and what you can do is when two chords 
are a tone apart, so the roots are a tone apart. So in this case, E flat and F, then you can place a diminished chord right in the middle there, so an E diminished chord. So then the root notes are going E flat, E, F. E flat, 6, 9. E diminished and F minor 9. And what I did there is I played an F half diminished chord or F, uh, not an F, an E half diminished chord or an E minor 7 flat, uh, flat 5 chord. You could also play a fully diminished chord. Fully diminished 7th chord. Um, or just a standard diminished triad. They all kind of work quite well. I found that this E half diminished chord sounded best though to my ears. So that's what I used in between chords 1 and 2. Between chords 2 and 4, our F minor and our A flat, I decided not to use any passing chords. So just went straight from F minor to A flat. Then from the A flat to the B flat, I decided to add a secondary dominant. Uh, I've done a video on secondary dominance so you can check out there. But basically what you do is you take a fifth above your target chord. So my target chord is B flat because it's the next one I'm going to. And you play a dominant chord on the root starting on that fifth. So in this case, the fifth of B flat is F. So I'm playing an F dominant chord. I'm playing an F9 into my B flat 11. Okay, and then between the B flat 11 and the E flat at the start of the chord progression again, I decided to add a B flat altered chord. So I did a B flat seven sharp five chord. So. Should sound like that. So all together with the passing chords in between our primary chords. So that was step number four, add passing chords into your chord progression. Step number five now is to add a melodic element to your chord progression. So this doesn't mean adding melodies on top of your chords. This means uh, adjusting and changing the top end of your chord progression or your chords to just add a little bit of a melodic element within the chord itself. So you can do this with what are called suspensions. So what I'm doing here with this B flat six nine chord is I've got a little finger free and I'm playing the seventh of the chord. So I've actually got a just a E flat nine chord here. And then I'm taking my little finger off to get the six nine. And it's called a seven six suspension because we're playing the seventh and then moving it down to a sixth. It's called a seven six suspension. You've got all types of suspensions. You've got nine eight suspensions. You've got four three suspensions. If you'd like to see a video on suspensions, let me know down in the comments. But yeah, that's what I did there. So we play an E flat, seven six suspension into the six nine chord. Okay. Then with the F minor nine chord, on the ninth, my little finger is on the ninth and I'm just stretching it up to the third. And it creates a cool effect there. With the A flat major seven, there wasn't really anywhere I could go. Same thing with the F nine chord. If I was to add any more melody to that, it'd probably make the chord progression sound a bit too weird. Uh, same thing with the B flat 11 chord. But then when I went to that altered dominant chord, the B flat seven sharp five, took that sharp five and then brought it down to a standard fifth make uh, just a standard dominant seven chord and it added a melodic element to that that chord and then we finished up on the major seven chord what I did there is a nine three suspension so my little finger is off the major seven chord and I hammered on the third so it goes from our ninth to our third and we have a 9-3 suspension there. So that's how I came up with the chord progression. Uh, there's five steps that you can follow. This is how I come up with most of my chord progressions. I start basic and build from there. Let me know how you get on with it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you in the next video. See you later.